The AMD Wraith Prism Cooler was released alongside the Ryzen 7 2700X back in mid-2018, which became the big brother of the Wraith Spire and the Wraith Stealth, which were included with the Ryzen 3, 5, and non-X version of the 2700. At the top of the list, the Wraith might be the coolest stock cooler ever released. Pun intended, I'm so sorry, but that's not only because it's a pretty hefty piece of kit, but also because it lights up. This channel is supported by my personal pocketbook, so if you'd like to help me out, just like, subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. Sporting 44 fins, a relatively robust copper cold plate, and a 90mm fan, the Prism certainly doesn't look like any slouch, especially when comparing it to its younger siblings. The Prism weighs 560 grams, that's 188 grams more than the Spire, and 243 grams more than the Stealth meaning that the Wraith will likely have much better heat soak. It is not just simply a piece of aluminum cut to size like the Stealth and the Spire, but rather a series of these four heat pipes connected by the 44 fins. But that's not why we're here to compare the Wraith Prism with the Spire and the Stealth, but rather to compare it to something else, something that it will inevitably be replaced with. For example, another tower cooler, or an AIO, or even a custom water loop. I obviously only have one of those things, so that's what we're going to try today. I will be pitting the Wraith Prism against the Kraken X53 all-in-one liquid cooler. The Kraken has a 240mm rad with two 120mm fans in a push configuration. The pump is a pretty standard Asetek design with a round copper cold plate. I mean, it looks pretty cool, but that's just my opinion, I guess. So as for testing, it might be a bit unorthodox, and I'm not going to do something that you might normally see on other tech channels because, well, I wanted to test this out for myself. I wanted to see what happened within my system. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna test this within my system. I'm gonna keep it closed. This is not gonna be an open tench, 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 bench. tench, ten <laughs> not gonna be a test bench scenario. So my case is the Fractal Define 7 Compact and inside is going to be a Ryzen 7 3700X stock with a max clock at 4.4 gigahertz on a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. That's a mouthful. Wow, I did it though. I decided to use a custom fan curve that stays at 40% until the CPU temp reaches 50 degrees and increases to 100% once the temperature hits 80 degrees. The ambient temp was maintained at 24 degrees during the tests with PC temps monitored by HW Info, specifically the CPU CCD1 TDI reading. And first, I wanted to see what the idle temps would be like, the Wraith averaging at 41.6 degrees and the Kraken at 37. That's not a huge difference, but typically the idle temps aren't really going to tell us the whole story. What I decided to do was to go right to the top, the 100%, ADA 64's stability test. I ran this test for 15 minutes and repeated it three times per cooler, keeping the median reading. And the results were quite telling, with the prism cooler nearly reaching 90 degrees with a high of 89.5 and an average of 82.2, and the Kraken with a high of 82, average of the Kraken, only reaching 73 degrees, which I'm already used to. So I was kind of surprised by this at first to see the AMD get so high, but when I really thought about it and how much heat soak that the AIO could actually use with all that liquid in there and the actual size of the radiator, it really makes sense that it has an advantage in these prolonged stress tests. The next test was Cinebench. I wanted to test the performance of the chip while using each cooler. And after the A to 64 test, I was unsurprised by these results with the Wraith scoring 4693 versus the Kraken reaching 4743. Only a difference of 50 points. And this isn't a deal breaker at all, but it is something to consider, of course, when you're dealing with a chip like the Ryzen 7 or the Ryzen 9, especially if you plan to overclock and especially if you plan to use tasks that are going to actually use all of the cores. The last test was a simple gaming benchmark, which by no means was scientific. I simply loaded up Kingdom Come Deliverance and massacred Retai for about 15 minutes before checking the temperatures. But I think it 
is important to note. It's an important thing to think about when you're testing these types of things. The Wraith averaging 58 degrees and reaching a high of 64 versus the Kraken averaging 53.1 degrees and a high of 62.8. It's a difference for sure, but it's a far cry from what we saw with Ada 64. And if you're someone who's actually considering using the Wraith Prism, I presume you're somebody who's mostly interested in gaming anyways. So from those results, we can assume that there would likely be no discernible performance differences between the two while in game. Just for kicks, considering the Prism has a downward flow of air headed towards the motherboard, I thought that it might affect the VRM temps and I thought it might help the VRM temps. That's what I've heard what other people said. So. I checked the VRM temps, of course, and it turned out to be the opposite. So I assume what was happening here is that hot air from the cooler was actually heating up the motherboard, not cooling it down. This could be different in gaming situations. These temperature readings from are when I did the A to 64 test. So that was that hot air that was reaching 90 degrees and the CPU was hitting the motherboard. So I think that was actually heating up the VRMs. Something to think about for sure. Um, maybe I should do another test with, with gaming to see if it helps or what idle is like, but take it as you will. VRMs were hotter with the prism. One other thing to note was the noise. I'm someone who likes a silent ish gaming PC. As long as I can't hear it, that's good as silent to me. So in this case, I found, especially with the Ada 64 is that the Wraith prism ramped up really loud and it got kind of annoying. So if you're someone who cares about the sound of your PC and you want a silent gaming experience, the Wraith is probably not the best idea. The biggest AIO you could actually get would probably be the best bet. And I can't forget the clip mounting style. I I despise having to put this thing on, I'm sorry. It, it should be relatively simple, but every time I have to put it on, it seems to take me ages, like just trying to, oh, I, I'm not gonna get into it. It's just gonna set me off. <laughs> so I have to answer that question. Is the Wraith Prism worth using in 2020? We're at the cusp of the release of Zen 3, and I presume that AMD is still going to include it with some of their chips. Now this thing still sells for $40 US, or it's something like $42 USD, which to be quite honest, if you're gonna buy a brand new one or you're gonna buy one from eBay, I would say just go find something else. Just go find something else. You're gonna find something better for that price or even less, some kind of tower cooler that's gonna do a better job at keeping your CPU cool. Although if you can get one for free, say you wanted to stick it on some Ryzen 5 chip that you have to replace the Spire that you already have, if you got a friend who can just give it to you, like I would definitely give mine to a friend if they really wanted it, then go for it. Or if you can find one really cheap, $10, I think that would be a pretty good deal. However, I think AMD could just ditch this thing outright, or at least like knock it down the product stack. Just put it with the Ryzen 5s and just leave the 7s and the 9s with no cooler at all. Because I think the people who are actually buying the 7s and 9s for the most part want to use that horsepower and they're going to use aftermarket coolers. I did. Anybody I know who bought a 7 or a 9 got an aftermarket cooler. And if you're someone who wants to overclock, pff, game over. Like, you're not going to use this thing. We've seen other people online try to do overclocking with the Wraith Prism. It's possible. You can overclock, of course, but there's limitations to it. So definitely think about that. If you're someone who just wants the game, I'm not going to talk about just all the different choices you have with CPUs. But if you're going to game... This is definitely plenty. This is gonna do the job. It's gonna keep it cool enough to play. You're not gonna get any throttling that's actually gonna be discernible to you. Like the tests I had with uh, Cinebench, obviously there was a difference, but that was all core tests for gaming. Absolutely perfect. This thing's gonna do the job. AMD Prism, still good to go in 2020. So this channel is named Tech Illiterate for a reason. If I missed anything, you think I'm wrong or anything, before you hit that downvote button, please just let me know what it is, because. I'm here to learn as well. But if you did like it, please give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. Anyways, this has been Tech Illiterate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching.